Say, joining me now is Perez Hilton, CEO of My True Ten and infamous US blogger and columnist who's had three children via a surrogate. Perez, I, I'm, I'm utterly thrilled that you're here to discuss things. Three children, first of all, how's that going? That's a busy house you've got. Well, thankfully, my kids are back in school. They started up again this week. And it's very different from back to school 2020 when we were all doing homeschooling. So I am thankful that their schools are taking great precaution to keep them safe. And I'm doing my best. And I think, to me, that's a great parent. Somebody who loves being a mother and a father and somebody who works hard at it. I am. And my best, I give it my all. I, I constantly feel like I'm failing, but I know that my kids are safe, protected, uh, loved, and having fun. What made you decide to go down the surrogacy route? Did you consider adoption before you considered surrogacy? Or was it, was it surrogacy, surrogacy from day one for you? You know, I think that that is something very personal and everybody has a different answer. For me, my dad died when I was 14 years old. So there was just something inside of me that said, if you have your own biological children, that is a way to keep your father alive, not just his memory, but physically, you know, your father will live on through your children. And that's why I chose to have uh, biological children, you know, but to me, you know, there are plenty of people who can have uh, children without surrogacy uh, who choose to adopt. You know, I don't I, I don't quite understand. It's either or, um, you know, uh, we don't criticize couples that can have children without surrogacy for doing that. You know, we, we, we could make the same argument. Oh, you're a couple that. Uh, you can have children, but there's so many kids who need a home. You should adopt instead. Yeah, no, you make a very valid point. And I, I, I really empathize with your, uh, your, your uh, argument when it comes to wanting to keep your dad's memory alive. It's interesting. My brother growing up uh, without his biological father was very, very desperate to become a father himself. And is a wonderful father to three children. So I really understand that. Um, do you mind me asking whether your three children all have the same biological mother? Well, they're, uh, we call, I, I've already had these conversations with my kids. Clearly they're very young, so their understanding of it all isn't as thorough as it will be in the future. Um, you know, I had three separate surrogates and the same egg donor. Okay, so they are, so, so the egg donor in that respect, the genetic mother is the same, but the, yeah, used three different surrogates. What was the process like each time? Was it quite easy to do? Is there a lot of paper? I mean, in the UK, we have a far stricter system when it comes to surrogacy than I understand that you do in the US. But is it still a massive headache trying to get there and to find the right sort of candidate, both to be an egg donor, but also to be a surrogate? Well, it was different each time. Um, the first time with my son, it all happened very quickly and smoothly. With both of my daughters, as many people, women who have experienced uh, IVF and fertility treatments, um, it can be a challenge getting pregnant, even with the help of modern technology and science. Uh, but thankfully for me to, uh, you know, have everything be as secure and thought out as possible, I worked with an agency that helped every step of the way. Uh, and the laws are even changing in America over the years. When I had my firstborn, my son, who is eight years old now, I had to show up in court and petition a judge even though it was a formality, uh, I had to petition as to why my own biological son should be given to me after he was born. That isn't in place anymore, um, but the process can be quick and easy or can be um, you know, ongoing if you don't find an egg donor that you connect with, if you don't find a surrogate that you're confident and comfortable with. Um, you know, for me, the, the surrogacy agency helped me find an egg donor, helped me find uh, surrogates as well. They even paired me with a lawyer because they wanted to make sure that I was protected and that 
God forbid, if the surrogate changed their mind mid-pregnancy, you know, I'm the father, the surrogate has no connection whatsoever other than being the host for my child. And I mean, even in the United States, not every state allows surrogacy. It's legal in many and it's not legal in some. And with the genetic mother who provided their eggs each time for all of your three children, is she in the lives of, of your children? Do they, do they know her? Do they get to sort of find out, you know, who, they, who they've come from as well as you? It's very, well, I guess it could be different in uh, other scenarios, but my route was kind of like a woman going to a sperm donor clinic and choosing an anonymous sperm donor from the bank. I mean, it was anonymous in that I don't know her name, her, her contact information, but I was able to see her and even um, do a Skype with her or FaceTime where I asked her some questions without her knowing it was me. I had my sister help me ask. I would type my sister questions and then my sister would ask her the questions. So I have no way of getting in contact with this woman, but I am forever grateful for her. Do you worry that down the line, though, that your, your children might say, who's my mummy? I want to meet her. I don't worry about that at all because I have very honest conversations starting now with my children. Uh, and, and I even had the ability, if I wanted to, to quote, um, get an exclusive with the egg donor, meaning I could have paid a lot more money to make sure that she would not donate eggs to any other family or couple. However, I did not choose that. And when I can have more adult conversations with my children, I will tell them, for all we know, this woman might have donated eggs to dozens of other families. And you might have dozens of other people that have similar DNA to you. That doesn't mean that those people are your brothers and sisters. And that doesn't mean that that woman is your mother. Every family is different. In a way, their grandmother is more of a mother to them than this woman ever would or could be. My mom, grandma, lives with us, and I help explain to them, you know, every family is different. What a family is, what that means, is different from family to family. Yours, you have a dad and the grandmother who lives with you, and you're so lucky. Some families have two moms and two dads because the couple split. Some families just have one mother. Uh, it's different from family to family. But in terms of if, if when they're growing up, they, they carry a sense of pain with them about not knowing, you know, that they're, 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 they're natural mother, uh, you know, what, what would you do to combat them? I mean, it's important, I agree, to have honest conversations with children. And certainly in, in my family, that always happened from day one. I've got a stepfather and, you know, I always knew he was my stepfather, but it hasn't necessarily alleviated pain that I feel about not having a relationship with my biological father. Is that something that ever sort of plays on your mind? No. But I'm happy to provide therapy for my children if they experience pain because of that. I'm in therapy myself and I find it helpful. So um, I will do my part to help them ease a perceived pain that may or may not happen in the future. Paris, thank you so much for coming on and giving us your story. Thank you so much for your candor. And good luck when the rabble return from school and you've got your hands full. <laughs>